Hello everybody. This is my uh, rental beach house build in Brindleton Bay using only base game and cats and dogs. Um, this little area right by the beach has always screamed to me either timeshare or you know beach cottage something that uh, I could definitely see a lot of sims going off for a weekend and just getting some time by the beach. Um, it could also very potentially be a summer home for some sims or even a full-time residence uh, for for a beach bum sim. Um, so that's what brought me to creating this little beach lot. Um, and the reason why I used only base game and only cats and dogs is I wanted to expand um, the options in the gallery for console players. So I didn't use any CC in this build. Um, and I kept the packs limited both as a challenge to myself as a builder and because not everyone has every pack um, either for gameplay reasons or because, let's be honest, they're quite expensive when you add up all the packs, all the expansion packs, all the game packs, and that's not, you know, feasible for people who want to enjoy the game. Uh, so basically, the way I went about this was I looked at a lot of reference of timeshares in the Maritimes on the East Coast, much like uh, the style of Brindleton Bay is. Uh, a lot of uh, Viceroy style cottages, the ones that have um, basically the their their signature uh, look is having a wall of like triangular windows, which I've absolutely seen custom content of um, that f face out towards your ideal point. So whether it's a in the mountains for a cottage or it's you know the sea what have you. It's That's how I based it off of. Um, so anyway, to the build itself, um, I put it up on platforms, uh, or rather on stilts, um, to uh, keep the beachy look. I will uh, later put the house itself on foundation just because the amount of platforms you need to support the weight of a house would be quite substantial. Um, and basically, I cut out a lot of fiddling with the roof. Um, the roof would probably be what gave me the biggest problem with this build. It's very fiddly um, going into build mode. For live mode, I would definitely recommend people who um, end up downloading this and playing with either having a sim in the house to live here or vacationing is uh, anytime you have a sim going up onto the second floor or you're doing activities up there um, just have the walls down that would be my recommendation because the camera does get super jumpy up there um, so added these little uh, little dormers, little uh, cut-throughs. I was looking around for a bunch of roof details because it felt a little blank. Um, didn't find anything that I liked on the top, but I did find a nice uh, nice chimney. I end up... I think the, the actual game when I was noodling around with um, walls or something, the game ended up deleting that chimney, and which worked out anyway. Um, I ended up putting it towards the uh, roadside of the house and making a custom chimney, but that'll be a little bit later on. Uh, so this is me extending the upper second floor, um, <laughs> getting uh, the the looker, I believe they're called, uh, windows in to get that really those big like views that you you would typically see in in something of these cottages uh something to really enjoy the view out onto the beach um i'm just adding little windows here for the the bedroom so 
they're they're gonna end up be a house that can hold um, up to four human sims with uh, one toddler sim, one teen adult or child sim, and then a double bed. Um, and then I also put in accommodations for if you have pets, since this is Brimstone Bay. So there's a pet bowl and a pet bed. And I believe I put in um, pet toys as well. So this is the custom uh, chimney I was talking about. I was debating using move objects and just stacking a uh, chimney on top of its chest. Uh, itself, I've done that with other builds. Uh, I instead I ended up just doing a one by two room with a the, sh the shortest half wall and just topping that off with with some white detailing to make a a custom chimney. And I think it turned out pretty well. Um, it does clip a little bit into the roof, but it's not so like so bad that it's like very noticeable. And then just added some smaller windows detailed up the uh, the walkway. It wasn't until much later on when I was looking through it that I realized um, <laughs> your sims would have no way of driving up to this place. Basically they would have to park um, there's a little like crescent moon uh, parking detail um, on the road there and then you'd have to like park there, grab all your stuff, jump down and come off to to the cottage which it's not unforeseen for like a vacation home but it would be pretty inconvenient for if this was like your you know your main household of you know just bringing heavier items in so I cut out a lot of uh noodling around with the front stairs I was uh basically didn't want uh, the the stairs to cut into the porch or the uh, the platform detailing so having them out a little bit and having that really narrow walkway uh, was the way I went about it so already getting into the interior detail um, went with kind of a homey little bit of a country aesthetic while still keeping a lot of like beachy colors um there's a there's going to be a lot of uh sort of weird curios and knickknacks stuff that basically you you go into these places and you're just looking at stuff and you're like how did they like get all of this stuff <laughs> um so adding a nice little nice little chair to like you know take off your boots or get ready for for going out onto the beach um, and I do noodle around a lot with the layout of this this lower floor uh, more so than I do with the upper floor so go through different iterations of how many rooms I want uh, this is going to end up being the lower bathroom um, figuring out what layout I want for the living room area and also uh, the kitchenette um, and initially I have two, uh, rooms kind of flanking the, the fireplace and I end up just doing the one room and leaving the other room, uh, open. There's sort of a, I guess, visual barrier when I put the stairs in. So this cuts out a lot of me noodling around, a lot of the camera jumping, uh, so to avoid motion sickness, just cut, I just went ahead and cut that out. Um, so this is me figuring out what I want to do for the kids room and for the double bedroom uh, gonna end up putting a little desk up there kind of making it another usable spot for the sims uh, and then just getting the the stairway up in here this is where I'm like noodling around do I want this area also walled off do I want to open do I want to like have the bathroom on the left side as opposed to right off the doorway so a lot of like playing around with the configuration because um, I still do want uh, the sims to be able to like use the 
really big like you know the wall of windows and just imagine them like enjoying you know a nice nice cocoa or what have you on a on one of those like miserable like rainy days that Brendan Bay always seems to get um or just you know enjoy enjoying breakfast before they're gonna go have a beach day stuff like that so I do end up doing the uh kitchen bar so that the sim sitting at the bar would uh would be able to like look out the windows and also there's a nice um dining room set that we'll be looking at. So this is me uh, looking through the catalog, looking for different items, putting the putting the bathroom back in, noodling a lot around. Do I want it centered on the fireplace? Do I want the the couch against the wall? Stuff like that. So a lot of like tweaking things around, a lot of playing with colors. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize until later how dark uh, the the video was so I will keep in mind for future videos to light up um, what I'm building first and then get around to furnishing it. So for the kitchen kind of just went for playing around with different aesthetics. Um, this is the one that I ended up settling on was the uh, base game tiled counters they have that really nice pop of uh texture on them uh really nice like wood tones to choose from <laughs> put out a a nice little barbecue on the deck uh just a really small one one that like would probably get locked up in in a shed which I'll be adding a little bit later. That was a suggestion from my boyfriend when I was showing him off the build was to add like a chain shed and add a whole bunch of um, crates and stuff that like the beach chairs and like the barbecue would get locked up in when someone wasn't using the house. If it was more of a uh, timeshare sort of deal or if it was like a, a rent for a week kind of place. Adding kind of like comfy but really like cheesy looking curios around um so played around with different appliances went for kind of a homey but but still modern uh look for the for the kitchen um playing or there's like a lot of swatches a lot of like really nice colorful swatches nice wood tones that you don't see in a lot of the other uh items in the sim so i went with like it's not quite a yellowy one, but it's like more yellowy than a lot of the other wood tones. Looking at some of the bar stools, just went with like the standard base game one. There's a lot of color options to to add like a little pop of color or even just keep that like beachy uh, light wood with, with a pop of color there. Added uh, the pet food dishes, so, so your pets are good to go for this area, as I said. At a... a sort of traditional style um, stove hood and then just kind of loading up the the cabinetry um, there'd probably be quite a bit of supplies in in a timeshare like this to make sure whoever's renting it you know they really all they need to bring is like food and just looking through the decoration catalog, looking for like more kitchen clutter, stuff that like would be stocked up or uh, kind of left behind by different timeshare owners. So there does end up only being um, one bathroom in this place. I remember to use the shower tub combo to make sure if you do have a toddler in this place or if you do have a dog in this place uh, they can be bathed uh, <laughs> noodled around on where to put that mouse hole I think I ended up putting it on the wall that has the um, the fireplace when I do end up removing this this smaller room off the um, off of the staircase really love these art pieces from cats and dogs like they're there's some nice color swatches. There's some nice just single pieces that can be used to to add a little pop of color without it being too overwhelming. And this was 
reconfiguring the uh, the front area a little bit more, give a little bit uh, more room for the Sims as they're coming in. And then this is, I think, yeah, this is where I, I go ahead and furnish a little bit of the top side um, to kind of get an idea of how many uh, beds I could fit into this place. And this is just adding another working area for if it sims working at home or if you have kid sims working on homework, that kind of thing. Um, and this is where uh, my boyfriend gave me the idea of adding a chain shed. So a place to hose off your feet or like wash off after you're coming off of the beach. Um, and a place where there would be uh, storage for a lot of the um, outdoor equipment stuff that needs to be put away during winter and you know stuff that needs to be kept under lock and key when there's not someone uh, using the timeshare and we were looking around for in or on deck chairs for the longest time I I knew there pro there probably weren't any in the sims but it's kind of like it's a little sad because it's it's something that like every every beach and every cottage has um, on the East Coast and both in, in America and in Canada. It's just like, they're kind of iconic, but it was one of those cases where I was like, it's either in another pack or it's not in it at all. Um, so <laughs> that was a little bit of a disappointment, but I still do end up putting a couple of lounge chairs on the, the patio. And this is where I was adding um, the hot tub and... I, we were looking into um, details about how much uh, how much weight platforms can support. This is also why I ended up putting the ha house up on concrete. Was uh, there's a certain amount of uh, weight that each pillar, even when it's reinforced by like concrete or like buried into the ground there's only so much weight it can take. So I ended up also putting a concrete foundation underneath the hot tub, kind of making it more of a permanent installation to uh, to this place. And then looking through um, different uh, options for putting a roof on this change house, I end up not doing uh, anything because it's using half walls. I couldn't... Um, add a roof, um, adding it, it in as a room with like walls wouldn't have worked because um, the main household is medium sized walls. So it would have been a really uh, awkwardly um, proportioned change house. Like it would have been very tall for what it needed to be. So just using half walls with sort of like the understanding of it's it's an outdoor change house they're all kind of like <laughs> dank and like damp and and there'd be, there'd be um you know stuff that would be under uh crates and what have you to prevent them from getting damaged by weather or or wet like keeping stuff that shouldn't be wet out of it uh and I knew there was these storage crates because Brindlin Bay has a port. So I was definitely uh, adding those as a detail um, for this would be where all of the beach chairs would get locked up, stuff like that. So another also just way of showing that this is uh, a, a rental lot of having like all these different storage options that people might not necessarily have in their own personal house. And just looking through, finding clutter, um, knew all of the sort of like gardening and like yard maintenance stuff would have been in season, so couldn't use any of that. And um, a couple of like more industrial details, those are in like get to work and, and even in laundry day. So just, I just added the just the decorative hamper and a bunch of towels to be like, this is uh, where there's some extra storage for that. 
and then just <laughs> going around and adding even more curios and more like weird knickknacks to to the living room and uh kitchen area <laughs> stuff that it's like it's it's that very like not quite like a hunting uh lodge aesthetic but it's it's definitely got it's a weird like grandma and weird like cottage uh addition to things but it still kind of adds like a homey touch um i noodle around a little bit on table options looking at the new ones that we got in the latest base game update um end up going with this one just because it has like a nice traditional look and just using the um the cats and dogs chairs with it because they're 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 exactly kind of like the aesthetic that this place has and just kind of looking at the different color options um just kind of going with the off-white i guess it would be like a a, a lighter gray and then remembering that I wanted this place to be good for people who have toddler sims because that's often uh, overlooked in a lot of um, rental places because people would be, you know, bringing a high chair or what have you. But because it's the sims, um, you can't really bring one with you. You'd have to cheat one in if you were vacationing to a place that didn't have like accommodations for it. Um, so I do end up adding a high chair to the the table there. And also it kind of works out because the um, desk that's upstairs has one of the of the similar style as the dining room. So you can just imagine them bringing up one of those chairs when they got the high chair in. Um, for the bathroom, I just kind of went for really traditional, like like a country kind of grandma's house aesthetic. These are probably one of the older like parts of the the house it's not the most modern looking where they've sunk their money in it just it sort of it functions and that's all you kind of need it to do um and just kind of like played around with uh different color swatches different uh <laughs> definitely was trying to find a mirror that was tall enough to go over the sink because a lot of the traditional ones that have like um look like they have a medicine cabinet behind them or so such are too low for that sink so i went for just a, a plain one is what i decided to open up that corner and just kind of make it into like a little uh reading area a little book nook so looked at uh different different options just kind of went with like a plain one moved over the the chair and the the side table um got like one of the really high back comfy looking chairs from from cats and dogs and just tweaked the colors a little bit um and then just decided to section off this area with a half wall so it's more of a visual barrier than too much of an actual barrier like using one of the smaller half walls to kind of this would be like you know another place to set your coffee another just a, like a visual barrier from the kitchen and just kind of like making this little book nook a little bit more private while still having like access to the whole living space at large and then just adding a couple of uh smaller curios to it and i love 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 this uh wallpaper swatch from cats and dogs it's it's one of my favorite ones it's just like there's a lot of little color options it's a lot uh really nice traditional look and it's just it's just a little bit of fun so added that in added some more uh curios and just uh looked at um different options to like kind of up the cheese factor of this place and you know, add in I think <laughs> I think the bottom rooms are the only ones that have curtains at the end of it I was looking at some of the bigger ones but they kind of clipped in a little weird into the the cabinet so I didn't end up going with any um cut out a lot from this because the camera was going wild just trying to put in that extra window to add a little bit more natural light into um the kids bedroom and then the parents or rather the double bedroom um 
there should be enough room on either side of that double bed for Sims to enter and exit very easily. Didn't end up adding any side tables to that. Um, this is where I tweak and add a little bit more detail to the outside. I don't think I ended up doing very much in terms of landscaping. It was mostly just like terrain paint, a little bit of um, plants and such. Yeah, just adding, you know, buckets of, of flowers adding just kind of like homey details. I think this was the only place where I used move objects was just to like squeeze the plant a little bit closer because <laughs> the fact that that you can't is just like uh it's not it's not great. And I'm just like tweaking around with um how large I wanted items. I wasn't sure if I do I end up using the big one? Yeah I do. I think I do. No I don't. Really? Okay. I thought I ended up having a giant chicken. Um, <laughs> and then just remembering to turn it off because I um, still want things to work well with the Sims, interacting with them. There's no electronics, I believe, in this place. So if you have a Sim who needs to work from home, um, they're going to need to bring their own laptop. Uh, and I don't think there is any TV in this area. So it's definitely like sort of the, it's fu fully in the um, vacation rental home. I was debating adding like a really old style, a tube computer as well to it. Didn't end up doing that. <laughs> and just adding some hanging ones. Uh, I believe I double checked the cutout, uh, me just double checking how low those hang in um when compared to uh, the A-frame style of roof, they might be floating a little bit, but because um, they're kind of tucked away during live mode, it shouldn't be uh, very distracting. If so, either move objects them up a little bit or just replace them with wall lamps would be my suggestion if you're playing with this. Um, and then just adding some some more fun details to the kids' room, uh, just some fun fun carpets. Looking for a nice like comfy neutral one to go for the the double bedroom. Really like that one that has the little uh, leaf detail. I know there was a lot of ones similar to it in seasons that I was like, oh, I can't use them because I'm you know limiting myself but there's still some really nice comfy looking options just from the cats and dogs pack that i really like they're like all of the quilted beds look super comfy um and then just adding a couple more lights they're they're, they're like a like a harbor master light and this is just double checking looking around i think i was showing my boyfriend the sites and just sort of going through with a fine tooth comb and making sure like I hadn't forgotten anything so I remembered to potty, remembered uh, this is where I remember to add a high chair and just like go through a bunch of different color options. Like initially I started with this and then I was like oh no this is gonna, this one's gonna be a little bit more durable looking. Um, and then adding a little like book nook, couple of toys up there. Um, I think the only activities for skill building that I have in here besides um, some of the uh, toddler ones, I think I add a I add a easel for painting. Um, I do add in I end up uh, extending the kitchen a little bit and adding a bar so there is there's cooking and and mixology available for your Sims. Um, and I can't remember if I added a chess table or not. I don't think I did. So there's a couple of skill building options for your Sims, um, but didn't go out of my way to like make sure to include all of them because this is still sort of a vacation home. This would be something that Sims with more portable skills would bring them as they could. I was debating adding a wood carving table into the um little maintenance shed but didn't end up doing that because it just didn't want to make it any bigger than it strictly needed to and it's still sort of like just 
it's more of a convenience of having a chain shed there than anything. Um, adding a little bit of visual detail, a little bit of art, and uh, a little bit more clutter to liven up the place. Um, <laughs> a lot of the the portraits that I ended up looking around for, um, I believe were a lot of the stuff were actually from Dine Out of all things. A lot of the the decorative ones I do I do like a lot. Um, <laughs> and then this was I think the tour. One last comb through. This is just exterior shot kind of doing a rotation, showing off the chain shed. So got our boys detail, got, you know, towels, a uh, little hose, and s something that would be basically like maintaining the lot as well as like something u useful for someone who is there. Um, and then just going through, kind of checking out kitchen. Um, I can't remember if I did record adding the bar, but basically what I do is I move the the bin to the corner, like the outer corner, and then remove that little corner um, counter piece and put the, just put a little two by one bar uh, there right by the, the dishes. And this is where I remembered I needed a pet bed. So I went for like the cute little nautical one, but to, like the pet beds <laughs> in both uh, cats and dogs, and then what I've seen of my first pet stuff, they don't look comfy at all. They just kind of look like really flat. So I don't, I never blame pets for like jumping up on beds and jumping up on couches because they look way comfier than the pet beds. <laughs> and then I think I was just looking for another uh, piece to to fill up this wall. Um, I think I go for the architecture sketch. Yeah, just size it up a little bit and just plonk it in. Um, just to like fill off that wall a little bit. Um, and then, oh, I've been getting this like th the door and window glitch like all the time when I build. And even like I thought, oh, with the CC removed, maybe that might uh, remove it. But no, still still getting that glitch, so they still haven't figured that one out yet, which is kind of par for the course. <laughs> um, and then just looking around the upper area, getting a view of the lower area here, and uh, just double checking if I missed anything. I think it was um, when I wasn't recording. Uh, that's when I added some of the skill building items, the easel and what have you. Um, and just double checking different areas for uh, where where the sims could like have different interactions and then just kind of getting a nice view. Checking what the view would be like from working on the downstairs, like a little bar area. And this <laughs> this is where I remembered that uh, the downstairs bathroom didn't have a light. So I made sure to plunk in a little light. Um, looked at different wall options and just ended up for going um, it's really traditional. Just, just a, a nice little warm light and then centered it. So yeah, this is my little rental lot. Um, I will add the gallery link in the description. And thank you very much. Have a good one.